Your boy is live now. We're checking out a stream agenda. Boom. Should we give some links? Bro, I'm gonna give the kick link on my Discord. A kick follow. I think I only have three followers on kick. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, three. It's all right. One day I'll have 75, I hope. <clears throat> So this stream is sponsored by Stashpad. Pretty much. Stashpad is an app that like a note taking app for developers. I really like it. If you use Vim and you're like obsessive about key bindings and speed, you'd love Stashpad, right? Because they've made it for developers. Everything is has a key bind. It's really fast. And it's really cool. So I just have it open here. In this little window here. You see it's got this mobile view. With a sticky mode you can turn off and on. Um, and this, what the sticky mode does. It leaves the window on top. So I can drag windows underneath it. And it'll still be on top. Which is really cool. And you can just quickly go to it and I'll just show some of the features off really quick. So I just press space and it highlights the um, the text editor. I can quickly add like 10 notes really quickly there. And you know, you can go up and down to um, select different notes. If you hold control and up, you can move the notes really fast. Um, I think delete would probably delete them or not sure what the uh, shortcut for delete is, but you can press right to go into them and like do more notes uh, inside that. So if I press right in notes, I can do more notes inside, which is pretty cool um, there. And you can open that and see all the sub notes. So I've created one for Stashpad to not forget all the other um stuff you can do so there's filters that's a command window okay so i'll make this a bit bigger so it's easier to see those but if you press Control k um you can see the kind of command window similar to like vs code and stuff and you can search for commands here so i actually want to know how i can delete oh, okay so Control backspace is how you delete notes so i will delete these ones that i made Control backspace yeah easy very quickly i can delete them even quicker than i can create them which is awesome um, it has code block support. Okay, so let's make a code block note here. So I hit space. Uh, I'm not sure how I do that. Normally it's three backticks. Const something equals something. Is this it? Do we get syntax highlighting? What if I do JavaScript? Yeah, okay, so you type the language here and you get the syntax highlighting. Very cool. And if I um submit that like that you get the code highlighting in your notes very cool so this is a note taking app specifically for developers so you'll have features like that um yeah it's really cool so some of these features you don't really get in other note taking apps such as like slack or it's just not as as efficient but with this one it's quickly really efficient to just hop between tabs and um, make notes, go into notes, collapse notes, um, you know, create new ones. Let's try out the filtering. Is that a filter? I'm not sure, I haven't actually done that. Oh, you can copy all the contents with one button. Stash command. View change log. Oh no, that's for the actual app. Not sure how the filtering works. Let's quickly see. This looks like it would be the filter. 
Why you always group to bottom? That's cool. Um, oh, they got a tutorial. Core concepts, home tab, stashes, navigation, select notes. You already know about that. Cover the clipboard, edit notes. Oh, you can, it supports Markdown, which is very developer friendly. Um, each note to play displays a timestamp over here. Very cool. All key bindings in the shortcuts panel. You can customize key bindings for muscle memory. You can assign colors with L. And you can try sticky mode, which I will be using. Let me assign some colors here. So L, cool. And then everything's with the keyboard. It's very nice. So it's nice. I don't have to leave the keyboard here. Cool, so I'm gonna put this back into the sticky mode, which I believe I got by making it small, and just leave this here. And um, we can move this to the bottom. All right, so someone asked me on my latest video to explain tokens. So shout out to them, let me find what their name was. I think their name was like, full stop or something <laughs> um so i can't really shout Claude them out has let's see yeah full stop shouts out to full stop maybe they haven't ronaldinho buffon shouts out to them um they've Claude asked can you make a video explaining what are tokens so that's something that i will do now um um, yeah, let's do that. Let's just, so I'll just Google it to make sure that, um, I'm right. So tokens aren't exactly a word, but you can kind of think about it as a word to dumb it down, but it's like, um, they can be sub words. They can be characters. They can be symbols. It depends on the type and size of the model. So... Let's see what this article says. For example, the phrase ChatGPT is amazing consists of six tokens. So this is how they've broken down this in tokens. Chat is a token, G is a token by itself, PT is a token, is is a token, amazing is a token, and exclamation mark is a token. Here is a more complex example. AI is fun and challenging, comprises of seven tokens. AI is fun, bracket open, and is challenging, bracket closed, exclamation mark together. It's kind of like, I think they learn through reading and like making tokens in such a way that it's like, I don't know, I was gonna say easy to consume and like, you know, reliable. But yeah, as we know, all LLMs have a token limit. And um, I have a message from one of my clients about an issue. Let me quickly switch context to that. They might have deleted it as I can no longer see it. Okay, it's all good. Um, it's going to watch my stream on TikTok. Watch my stream on TikTok. Yo, someone's already given me 300 likes. Yo, shout out to whoever that was. Unfortunately, I didn't see it, but now that I have TikTok, open on my phone i might be able to see who likes the live now so shouts out to them um what else can we learn about tokens context window starts from your current prompt and goes back until the token count is exceeded yeah, that's true. So context window is something that I've talked about a lot. And it's like one of the biggest limitations in LLMs at the moment. 
And context window isn't just for the prompt that you give it, but it also is for the output that it gives and all the previous text that has been generated, including the prompts as well. So you have to consider that. So it's not just about how much text you want to input into the LLM, but how much text you expect it to output as well. And if you want to reference something from earlier in like the conversation, if it's a chatbot LLM, you, um, that's also included in the input in the context window. So you have to consider all of these things. What is this? Oh, this is. I'm gonna move this so it's not in the way all the time. Oh, it's not visible. Um, there's potential solutions around exceeding the token limit. I think they might talk about using a database for long-term memory, such as Pinecone. Like vector databases, a very popular solution to um, get around this. Um, but no, they're talking about truncating or admitting and rephrasing text to fit in the limit. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps with the answer there, Ronaldinho. So yeah, let me move that here. And now we can talk about system prompts. So this is something that I learned today, which was pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I can find any articles on it. So, um, I want to find some articles on system prompts. Maybe just this one. So what a system prompt is, it's a prompt that is used, okay, according to this, it's prompt that is it's a special message that is used to steer the behavior of ChatGPT and other similar LLM models. Um, and it's actually, so when you use ChatGPT in the browser, they've actually, you don't get to see the system prompt that OpenAI is using here, but it's normally something like, I don't know, let's see, there was actually like an example here, something like this. Like you are, uh, well, it wouldn't be this specific, but it'd be like you are an AI assistant, right? And that gets that gets put as the system prompt for every message that is sent through to the LLM, right? So it sets the context for what your user prompt is and what the output is. So it's something like if you, um, there's actually open AI articles about this. Let me try to find it. Um, would it be here? User. So, uh, mm, let me try to find this article. Damn, I don't know how to find it. They don't call it. It's a system instruction. Here, like for instance, like in this one, they say you are an assistant that speaks like Shakespeare. And this kind of like system prompt is like stronger and more powerful than the user prompt. So if, if, um, if the system prompt is speak like Shakespeare, the user might not want like Shakespeare output, but they won't be able to, well, they shouldn't be able to like override that. So if they say like, give me an answer about this, do not speak like Shakespeare. The design is meant to be in such a way that the system prompt actually is stronger and sets the context more than the actual prompt does. And there was a good article about this by OpenAI but I can't find it. What did they call it? They call it system instruction. Try find it. Maybe this one. Mm. 
No. No, not that one. How to write system instructions. Maybe we can find another article. So when you're using the OpenAI API, you're actually able to set the system instruction, which is something you're not able to do in ChatGPT. But in ChatGPT, you, you can set context with just the prompt. You can be like, act as an Australian outback person and tell me about, I don't know, large language models and then it will speak like you know an australian outback person like g'day mate welcome to the australian outback but um with the system prompt you can kind of set it like that without having to put it in the user prompt sorry if that doesn't make too much sense but yeah there's some examples like the assistant is a chef no 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 you kind of set the context i only learned about this today so i don't know about it too well but i thought it was pretty interesting i thought everything was done just with the user prompt but there's actually a whole system instruction level of things which i didn't know about so yeah that's pretty cool okay we're going to move on to sweep ai again um i want to try use sweep ai on my snake game i'm not sure if i have pushed that one so the way sweep ai works is actually with um with github so you actually need to have everything pushed to github so i think this is my snake game let me see if i can run it i think game.py doesn't seem to have run anything is it or is it main.py Python main.py. Okay, yes, cool. We have our snake game. I don't think. Oh, and I've pushed everything. Okay, so let's check my GitHub with snake game. And. Uh, hmm. How do we see the origin? Is it not called or oh, small snake? Is this it? This is probably it. No, this isn't it. Um, how do you see the git check a uh, git URL? How do you find a git URL? The remote URL. Git config. Git remote origin URL. Git remote show origin. Does that work? Yo, we got a message on TikTok from Bob. Hey man, I am from Africa. How can I get a job as a software engineer? That's a good question. Um, there's lots of job postings online. Hopefully you can um you can try to look at some. So for instance, I know remote okay. So actually, I want to try to do some of these as well, but there's lots of like remote jobs for software engineers. That's one of the good things about being a software engineer is you can, let me turn this off. Actually, I'll just, you can work anywhere, right? So it doesn't matter if you're in Africa, Indonesia, Australia, America, as long as you have the skills and you're able to convince the person hiring you that you're suitable to do the job, you should be able to, you know, work at, any of these companies. So this is one website, remoteok.com. They have a bunch of listings here. I think this website is actually like paid. Like you can't apply straight away. You have to like sign up or something maybe, but yeah, see, but like it tells you who is hiring. So you could probably Google search this company and apply it without going through this site. And there's other sites as well. Like obviously LinkedIn um, has a whole, like a lot of lot of jobs are posted on LinkedIn, so you can find that. You know, you search it for what specifically you're looking for, Indeed, and um, you know, if you just Google remote jobs for software engineers, you can find these jobs. So it doesn't really matter exactly where you are. I'm not sure for the Africa market specifically. They might have their own, you know, website 
Um, but yeah, Remotive, there was a thread. You know, actually, I'm going to help you guys out. I'm going to do this so I can make a Twitter post. So there was someone on Twitter who I bookmarked that had a whole bunch of links for remote jobs. Where was it? Oh, did I not bookmark it? No, I thought I did. Oh, well, let me search it. I swear I bookmarked it. Here, okay, cool. So remote.co, nodesk.co, no flexjobs.com, remotely.jobs, remoteforme.com, remote habits. See, there's so many. Let's check the first one, remote.co. This looks weird. But, you know, you just got to keep trying, and it's it's probably not going to be easy. Um, especially if you don't have too much experience, but but they're out there. I mean, another thing as well is you could try Upwork. I don't know. I haven't. Yeah. Freelance, start freelancing, put your services on Fiverr. John Power asks, are they full-time or contract? I think there's both options. These all say full-time. This one says contract, contract, full-time, internship. It could be anything like, um, yeah. Like this is a reputable company, GitLab, Proxify, Sticker Mule. I see them everywhere on these on these remote sites. They're hiring like crazy, it seems. Let's see what Elon's saying. Falcon Nine. Yo, DZ Rider says, hey, could you please explain how did you include chat in VS Code? This is a separate window, um, DZ Rider, so it's not actually in VS Code. John Power asks, are you working while traveling? I was. I'm back home now, but yeah, I was working while traveling. Um, it was a bit hard. Actually, the working wasn't too hard on my laptop. I don't mind working on my laptop, but the streaming, it was hard on my laptop for sure. Because, you know, obviously I need the chat open and all these things. And, yeah. So it's really good to be back home with my stream set up. But I was still still able to stream. So if you check my past streams, I was, I was traveling for like two whole months. I think I only managed to stream like six times. But pretty much from... From here, two months ago, test stream on Mac. That's when I was first testing how to stream on Mac. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Actually, oh, 16 streams while I was overseas. And you can see I'm like live from Finland, live from Pl Prague, live from Italy, live from Spain. Six hours stream, digital nomad in Thailand. Yeah. Oh, cool. Did you go for a new full-time role back in Australia? No, I haven't. I'm trying to really make this freelance kind of software developer lifestyle work out. John says, if you have a tablet, you can extend it as a second screen. Yeah, I used to use my iPad actually for a second screen, but um, I was limited on store on like carry-on space. Actually, I'll show you if you on this video, I'll show you my setup. In this Melbourne video, I show it up right here. This is my setup. I had a gooseneck with the iPad. I mean, it's turned off here, but like, it was pretty cool. And that was my like, this is in a hotel. <laughs> my setup while I was traveling. Yared asked, where are you from? Um, I'm, I was born in Iran, but I've spent my whole life in Australia. Yeah, and it was all just in one bag. I love carrying just one bag, so you don't have to check in and wait for baggage carriage at the um, airport and stuff. Yeah. John Paz, do you have a 60 watt external battery? I might. I actually did buy an external battery for my laptop, but I only used it once, so I never bring it anymore because it's just too heavy. DZ Rider says, how do you ensure not sharing sensitive data while streaming? Yeah, that's tough. I always leak my API keys and stuff. 
Um, but you know, I <laughs> there's probably better ways you can do it. Like, so I do use my personal Chrome account, but you know, if you were smart, you'd have like a separate profile for everything. If you were even smarter, you use a whole separate like user account. You know, you don't log into your emails and stuff. Yeah. Are you working in Upwork? No, I don't actually work in Upwork. But yeah. Thank you for all the questions, guys. I appreciate it. You just come in clutch with like 20 questions in 10 seconds. <laughs> Could you use API keys as environment variables? Yes, I do. I normally do put my API keys in environment variables. But I was talking about on stream, like, because, you know, I have to copy and paste them. And right now I only have one monitor, so it's just like, you know, kind of hard to do this stuff and not expose it. Or I'll, like, have it copied in my clipboard or in my command history. And, you know, I end up accidentally exposing API keys all the time. But uh, luckily they're, like, easy to just create new ones and delete the old ones. So it's not no big deal. Which programming language is my favorite? JavaScript. That's my shit. I love JavaScript. Uh, I should probably be using TypeScript more, but obviously I still need to get to that. So I was looking at this and wondering why Snake GPT is that what, what we're using? Snake GPT. What? Okay. Apparently. So you look at the commit log. AI snakes. Okay, no, this is it. All right, we're going to try to use sweep.ai on this. John Power asks, JS or TypeScript? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I know TypeScript is objectively better than JavaScript, but um, I'm a bit of a noob at it, so I, that's why I like JavaScript more. But yeah. Yo, Yared, thank you for the likes. Please carry me, just join. Okay, so I'm going to try use Sweep. I can't remember how to set it up, so I'm going to go find their website, sweep.ai. This Hassan Ahmed liked the live. Thank you so much, Hassan. We're on over 500 likes now. Thank you guys so much. How are we looking on TikTok? Oh, I forget that there's a there's a gift goal bar here. Move it like this, okay. Yo, sweep. Hey, hi, what's the domain? Oh, sweep.dev, okay. Install sweep. Let's go, how do we install sweep? Add the sweep GitHub app to your desired repo. Configure. AJ, oh, two-factor. Yo, Hassan Ahmed, top stream, thumbs up. Thank you so much for the very nice comment. See, like this, I don't know if I should be exposing this, like, two-factor code. Like, can you actually even do anything with it if you don't know my password? Anyway, I'm going to hide it just for, like, um, just to be safe. Okay. Luckily, I have an ultra-wide monitor, so I'm able to, like, pull stuff to the side. Yo, we got our first message on Twitch by Diggs, by the way, seven. Yo, what's up, Diggs? I'm using Sweep AI to help me automatically write code on my project. John Powell says, have you considered mirror streaming your coding sessions on Kick? Yes, I am on Kick, John. Please be my follower. They do pay, but they only pay affiliates, right? So I need 75 um followers initially so to just be on the path so i am on tick at tech friend guys i please appreciate anyone that can follow me on kick it would it would be so good if they could pay me 16 dollars an hour to stream that is my goal but yeah I'll, if you look 16 at the an hour to stream where is the path to affiliate achievement anyway i've made a video on it affiliate. i don't you can't get you can't get paid initially, you know, you need a certain amount of like followers and subs and stuff. So I only have three followers. We're four, oh, four followers. Yes. Data Distillery. Thank you so much, Data Distillery. I really appreciate you. Yared's off. Have a nice day. Thank you, Yared, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Keep it up. I will. I will. I am going hard on streaming. I am going hard on t content making. 
I really want to like turn this into a full time job. Uh, we're just getting started. I appreciate everyone. Yo, we got a panda from Please Carry Me. Thank you so much. How much does that fill up the bar? Is that just one bar fill up? Let's see. Ooh, it's five. Fuck yeah. I don't know what that means. Five diamonds or something. But yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot more than a rose. So thank you so much. Please carry me. I will carry you. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, sweep AI. How are we adding this? Oh. Getting started to install sweep chat. Check out this. Okay. We can get up low. No, I don't want it locally. Add the app to your. How do I do this? Install Crick, the green button, then add the repository you want. Where's the green button? I've already installed it. That's a thing, but I don't know how to add the repository. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Snake GPT. Okay, we've added the repository. Excellent. Um, And now... And now to run this, where's the acting sweep? Now we mm. so the way you use this is here you create a new issue in your repository this is why i like it this is exactly how as like a software engineering manager you would make tasks for your junior developers by creating issues in either jira or in this case github which is awesome like keeping it all in github i think is awesome and you start it with sweep so you'd be like sweep in this file use this all right um, and then you can have a chat with it. Okay, so let's see. What do we want to change with our app? So our app is kind of like this. It's a snake game where um, the snake change our snake changes color, and there's AI snakes. So okay, one thing that I've noticed is our snake starts as white, so it's hard to tell which one is our snake. So I'm gonna say have our snake starting color is blue right let's see if it can do that um it's gonna be vague though that's the issue so i don't know if it will work but i'm keen to, i'm keen to uh, try it out so i think we go sweep colon Change the starting color of the user player snake to blue. This is like, I'll be very impressed if it does this. Okay, so I think we just submit the issue and sweep AI picks it up. Okay, so straight away you see it added the sweep label and it's added a comment now that it's it's searching for the code, right? It's analyzing the code first. Let's see if this works. Okay, step two, some code snippets I looked at. Let's see what it's found. Snake.py, excellent. So this is where we've set it to white by default. So this is the line that we want it to change. Let's see if it's smart enough to figure that out. Oh, it's also looked at game.py and all output and readme and the ai snake but we only want the normal snake let's see if it can figure it out come on sweep ai last time i tried this it didn't work so i'm really hoping that it works this time i'm going to make this a bit smaller so there's just black behind me it makes it easier for the tiktok um what is it called what would happen okay 
Yes, this is perfect. Look, I'm looking through the relevant snippets and I've decided to make the following modica modifications. In the snake class, change the default color from white to blue by replacing the line. This is an RGB definition to just red and green fully off and blue on full. This is perfect. This is literally perfect. And it's making a PR. That is perfect. Did it make the PR? No, not yet. So this is also perfect because this flow making a pull request is the like the ideal flow for a development structure. Like so here's how it works is the software engineer manager or the senior software engineer or even the business admin. So you don't even actually need to be a software engineer now. A business admin could make this issue on GitHub. The developer picks up the issue and submits a PR. And then the senior developer can look over the PR, do the code review, and like merge it in. So right now we'll check the pull request. Boom, here we go. Change the starting color of the snake to blue. And it writes a brilliant PR. So this is better than what I would do. I'm too lazy to write this. Look at the description and the nice title. This PR, PR stands for pull request, changes the starting color of the plate snake to blue in the snake class constructor. These are the changes made, replace the file here, tested the changes locally and verified this. Okay, there's, I don't think this is legit, but it's like, it sounds legit, it sounds great. Um, and it references the issue as well that it fixed. <laughs> it reviewed it itself. And then me as the developer can, um, Jump out, does it do unit tests? Oh my God, it does. It says it does, but oh, I don't think it did. There's no unit test written. It's just, it's just set that to like sound good. Cause look, you can look at the files it's changed. The only thing it's changed is this. Oh, it changed the comment as well, which is really nice. Um, but it's perfect. So now I can review it. I can merge the pull request into main. Confirm this merge. And that's it. And I'll also confirm, so I made this other one, which is, yo, we got a, a person on kick. Ka, how do I pronounce his name? Kai Don Small. Kai Do One Small. Kai Do One Somali. Kai Do One Smail. Oh, that took me three trials. But thank you so much for the comment on kick. I appreciate everyone that follows me on kick because hopefully they'll, they'll pay me eventually. Uh, I'm gonna merge this one as well, which is just something that Sweep wants in their config. So now I can go into my local version of the snake game. Make this a bit bigger for you guys. Remove this sidebars and just go get pull because we've merged it into the main branch. It will quickly pull all the changes. And if we run the file again, hopefully we start with a blue snake. Oh no, so it's made every snake blue. And that's because um, that's because the AI snakes are actually um, building off the same class as the uh, the player snake, right? So let's see if Sweep AI can fix that. We'll make a new issue. We'll be like Sweep. Extend the snake class to take in a color for initial color for the snakes and change the AI snake file to initialize the snakes as random colors. Take in, I'm gonna make it an optional. So we don't have to specify it for the player. Okay, let's see if we can do this. So I'm gonna try and make it so that the AI snakes are all random colors. Don't Pal says, can't believe it can even do OOP, object oriented programming. I can believe that. I'm just impressed with this whole, like, 
approach that is all within GitHub, I think that's a great solution. Kai says, do you have any examples or use cases about IoT solution? Yeah, actually I started an IoT startup. I'll show it off. It's dead now, but it was called Garden Space. We tried to make this um this robot that will help you grow food at home, right? It's something that you put in your backyard. It had cameras on it Hi, that could starter. sense where the team behind uh, Garth like Farmer flowers, Garden Space is plants here to help. And tell if they need um, water and shoot water at them. It could also have sensors to see like... Actually, no, we didn't have soil sensors. But it could also detect like movement of animals and deter animals like um, deers, possums. Like here. <laughs> we had one of our people dress up as a cow for some reason and just spray water at it. Yeah, so this is IoT, right? Internet of Things. What's the definition of IoT? I feel like it's pretty broad. Interrelated computing devices. Yeah, so if we had like many of those, they could talk together and, you know, take care of your garden. Let's see how Sweep's doing. Uh, okay, it's looking at the code. Yes, these are the right files. It should change. It's coding it now. Look, it says added unit test. Oh shit! I accidentally clicked it. But I don't think it actually does unit tests. Can you share this on GitHub? Which one? Sweep AI? Yeah. Sh well, how do you want me to share it? Actually, I I think I can share it in the chat on Kick. Um. Here. Let's see if you get this. No, it's read only on Kick. Kai, I'm sorry, but just search Sweep AI Sweep on GitHub. I'll leave this open here for you. Sweep AI Sweep. But yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not able, actually, I could just go to kick, I guess. I guess I could just do that. Here. There you go. I've shared it. I'm assuming that's what you're asking for. Or did you want the snake GPT? Is that what you wanted me to share? I could share that too. Is it public? Probably, I don't see why I would make it private. Um, Yeah, public, I'll share that as well. Oh, the garden space? I don't, garden space doesn't have a GitHub. That one was proprietary. Wait, what? Oh, this is not, <laughs> this isn't it. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry, that one doesn't have a GitHub, but, yeah, I'm sorry. John Power says, making a soil sensor with a speaker that makes your indoor plant cry when it wants the water. That's funny. Yeah, I actually think that exists. I remember doing market research when we were doing that, and I think that was a thing. Okay. Has this made a pull request yet? Yes. Extend the snake class to accept optional color and initialize snakes with random color. Let's look at the commits or well, the files changed rather. Um, it's remove the comment for AI snake. That's random. Why? Okay. I mean, sure. Um, actually, let's look at snake.py first. Okay. Yes. It's added the optional color and yep. Yeah, perfect. That's a perfect change. And here it's gone color random int. Yep. Super initialize the color. That looks perfect. Dude, I'm really impressed with this sweep. Sweep, um, sweep AI. <laughs> Yo, greasy fat nerd on Twitch. How you make AI from scratch. That is a very difficult thing to do. Like to make a 
like a good AI from scratch, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have like a PhD in AI, but you can make a simple AI from scratch. Depends how you define it. Like deep learning, large language Merlin models, pretty difficult. But like, if you don't want to do it from scratch, from scratch, you can, you know, download these models and train them yourself with hugging face or something. Fluffy Fur says there is a Python library that might help with this. It's called YIF. Look it up. John Power says genetic algorithms are pretty easy to learn. Yeah, so genetic algorithms are a simple form of AI that you could start out with if you want to do it from scratch, from scratch. Like nothing given to you. You write every single line of code. Probably looking at genetic algorithms. All right, let's look at YIF. What is YIF? if code or is this oh is this a, is this a troll you know no one's really trolled me before so is this the first troll it's like a <laughs> it's like a, fl a fl uh, furry thing fluffy fur i mean that definitely aligns with your name i mean <laughs> to make sure we're gonna go yif python simple <laughs> package for yiffing <laughs> You know, I don't want to click this, so um, we're not going to go into that. Um, what we are going to do is look at what um, what Snake what Sweep did with our random AI color. So hopefully, now if we do this, we'll have colorful different snakes. Yeah, we do. Cool. And the user is blue. Very cool. Okay, I think I'll leave sweep from there it's passed every single test we've given it with zero bugs which is really impressive so i'm really happy about that um what i was going to do next is um and i'm addicted to this snake game now In your own time, just look up what YIF is. Sure. Um, what was I gonna do next? Okay, that was sweep. Humata.ai. I can't remember what this is, but I said I'd look it up, so let's look it up. Better not be a troll again. Okay, it's chat GPT for all your files. Ask questions and get answers about files instantly. Okay. That's cool. Uh, I probably won't look into this because I don't think it would be better than Claude. But you get 60 pages for free and unlimited questions. Sure. Fluffy says, what models do you recommend that can be trained easily and as well can be trained with a realistic voice? Um, Like for voice generation? No. Honestly, I don't have too much experience with that, but there was like clone was a voice clone AI. But what it was called? It wasn't Speechify. Oh, Eleven Labs is like really popular, so I'd probably say this one. Eleven Labs. But it's not really a model, it's more of a surf service. So I don't know if that satisfies your needs, but yeah, I think 11 Labs is definitely like a very popular, well-respected, um, whatever you call it. I'm gonna move this restream chat up a little bit. There we go. Very popular voice, 21. Yeah, you can check on Hugging Face for the open source ones if that's what you're after. Hugging Face is definitely the best repository for models. All right, 3D AI. Okay, so this one makes 3D models from a prompt. I had a look at it before and it was limited to only doing like furniture, which was a bit annoying, but still pretty cool. So let's try it out. Very cool landing page with these vertices. I don't know if you'd call it. Wow, and they explode and reconnect as a... Wow, that's really cool. I really like this website. Look at that. So 
on the landing page they have this 3D thing that as you move your mouse it kind of moves around very cool and then as you scroll down it ex it twists and explodes into dots everywhere millions of dots well probably not millions but heaps of dots and then as you scroll down further all those same dots come back to make a globe that is super cool I haven't seen anything like that and this is still moving around with the mouse very cool some circles appear then it turns into whatever that is and whatever that is and a controller and more stuff very cool let's try this out i really like that landing page dz rider says the best open source projects are bark and tortoise text to speech all right text to 3d let's try it Yeah, so these, it's limited to this. Lamp, sofas, tables, cutlery, ottomans, swords, shields, axes. We only have 10 credits. We can generate models, save models, download models. Oh, we don't have any download credits, so that's separate. That's very interesting pricing model. They have separate credits for downloading. Um, they focus on functional models rather than artistic ones so make sure your text prompts are descriptive and well structured supported categories ottomans geometric patterns like chesterfield lamps table lamps surface short cutlery Cutlery categories include knives, spoons, and forks, but can it make a spork? Bias towards realistic shapes with simple handles with no no sporks yet. Oh, uh, what about swords? Kite buckler. All right, let's try to make a shield. I wonder if. A kite shield with two snakes intertwined on the front. Let's see if we can do that. Feel free to start generating more models while you wait. You'll find all your models on the My Models page. Mm -mm. Okay, this is going to take like 100 seconds, so I might wait for that. John Powell says, Shep E on Hugging Face does something similar. It was based off an AI pointy. Okay. It, does Hugging Face still let you in, do the inference? I feel like I haven't had much. Oh, Shep E is from OpenAI. Oh. Are we able to do inference here? Let's just do a fork, no, a spoon. It's very simple. Just wanna see if it'll be able to do it at all. Seems like it's doing something. Nope. Yeah, I never get to like do inference on hugging face. It always gives an error for me. Which is sad, and I can't be bothered. Oh, cool, these are some 3D things it's made. Can't be bothered, like, trying to set this all up. This stream. Ooh, we're halfway there for our shield. All right, let's just do another one. Let's do... Let's do a sword. A red... I want to try to do, like, the... A dragon dagger. A small red dagger with a green tip. Like a dragon dagger poison from RuneScape. DDS P O S R S. Let me show you what I mean. Yeah, this. <laughs> this is the shit. 
Damn, that looks cool. Let's see if we can make that. Our shield is almost ready. <laughs> fishing level 99, dude. 99 fishing max. <laughs> Alright, here's our kite shield We've intertwined. Oh, we can't click it. What is this? View. Okay. Oh. There's no snakes whatsoever on this. And it's definitely not what a kite shield looks like on RuneScape. But it is a shield. <laughs> it is a shield. I feel like, yeah, the like two snakes intertwined is a bit optimistic. Like it's a quite complex shape. So uh, I'm not too surprised that that. Yo, thanks for the like, CS. Appreciate you. Give me some more likes. I feel like after this I've done all my tools. I was gonna check out Mastodon. Is anyone here in the chat use Mastodon? Is that gonna be the future? Now with all these players trying to make Twitter, I feel like will Mastodon win? Or no? I don't think I have a Mastodon, so I'm gonna create one. I don't know how this shit works. Hope I can get my um my handle. Yay, I got tech friend. Nice. Verifying that I'm a human for Mastodon. I gotta click tables. Whoa, this is new. I've never seen this style of 3D object generation now. That's what that's what um Dude, this is like what's it called? GANs? We're like training a GAN now. Like a 3D generating game. It's pretty cool. Like you can see what Google's working on. Like first they were doing like real world object generation. And now they're doing like what looks like 3D object generation, which is very cool. I mean, real world object detection is what they were originally doing. Okay. Um this is Mastodon. Which is supposed to be kind of like a Twitter user interface that's built on top of the Fediverse, which is kind of like a decentralized backend for a social network. Kind of like Twitter. Um, oh, my sword is ready. <laughs> no, the sword, instead of the tip being green, the whole, the handle is green. And it's not a dagger or small. It's a long sword. I mean, it's red. So that's cool. But the green is on the wrong side. I mean, it's a cool sword. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, not exactly what I wanted. I wanted this. But yeah, still a cool tool. Hopefully they'll make it better. But yeah, Blender GPT could be interesting. Yeah, Blender GPT would be cool. Is that is that a, that's a third party thing though? And I also don't think it does modeling. It does more like generation. I don't know. That's what I've seen so far. But anyway. Oh, okay. So Mastodon. Boost your profile. Personalize your home feed. 
yeah, let's explore. What do we want to find? Um, oh, this is what's trending. What the hell is add the bacon to make it better? <laughs> um, how do I search? AI. Yes, I want AI. I want to follow AI. Is this how you follow AI? Yes. LLM. Yes. Chat GPT. Yes. Open AI. Yes. Um Yeah, okay. I think that's a good start for my Mastodon. If you guys are on Mastodon, follow me at techfriend at mastodon.social. I think I'll leave that for now and go back to Twitter. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Actually, what? how do I see my feed now that I've followed some hashtags? Here we go. This is in German. This is also in German, is it? No, it's not. It's just that guy's name. Llama 2. Yeah, that's something that I haven't looked at. Apparently, it's 1 30th of the size of GPT 3.5. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's a hilarious showdown meta versus open AI. What is this? Oh, that's a cool image. A llama versus a robot. What is the craziest thing you've seen at a music festival? As an AI model, I don't have personal experiences. And Llama says, apologies, I can't. Is there a hosted Llama 2? I mean, I don't know why I'd bother. It's not better than anything. So so far, so right now, if I want to use anything, I just use Claude. I think Claude is the best current free, free um, LLM or chat model. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. There's a lot of non-English things. All right, let's look at Twitter. Let's see if anything cool, new in AI is happening. Um, following. Um. The first global music tour by Web3, Gary Vaynerchuk, ooh, Anthropic, I want to follow them. Have they said anything cool? Introducing Claude 2, yes, Claude 2 is great. Language models reason out loud. Hugging face, I'll follow them. Meta AI, I'll follow them. Lillian Wang, sure. Dude, I'm like, I'm trying to unfollow all of this. Um, Web3 stuff. Sorry, all my OV friends. <laughs> I'll still follow Gary. Twitter, AI Twitter is no OGZ. Here are eight under the radar AI accounts I follow. Okay, let's see. Is Claude on ChatGPT for all? No, I think Claude is still like proprietary, but you can just use it at Claude.ai. You might need to use a VPN into like the UK to get it initially, but once you do that, you can just use it without a VPN. So yeah, it's awesome. Like you can upload up to five files. It has a 100,000 um, token context window, which is like the coolest shit ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really good at coding. I like it, yeah. So yeah, Claude.ai. Software engineer experimenting with large language models, okay. Follow him. Well, Lance Martin. Langchain AI. Possible tempt 
tip on improving llama two. I didn't seem to post anything interesting. The Mary Kondo of data. I'm just seeing if these guys post anything cool. Widely overblown chart. Fine print is the on single question if a number is a prime. GBT4 is getting worse. Many people have reported noticing a significant degradation in the quality of model response. Yeah, yeah. Technium. Often the chads at those research are dropping one of the first fine tuned versions of Llama 2. This guy seems to post interesting stuff. I'll follow him. Yesine MTB applied AI X stripe now at attractor.ca. I'm gonna look at one last person before I move on. Oh, the bloke AI sounds interesting. <laughs> it's a nice name. Uh, where's all the lit shit, you know? Like, I swear AI Twitter was, like, going off last, like, the first like four months of this year, it was like every day is like something new, revolutionary, cool happening. And I feel like it's just like dying off now. I mean, we got Llama 2, but like, sure, it's a lot better than Llama 1. Actually, is Llama 2 the best open source model now? Okay, so there's this MT benchmarks, hugging face. Someone showed me this today. Oh, is it empty bench? Yeah, sorry. And um, yeah, by LMSIS. What's LMSIS? So these people rank. Yeah, they rank all these chatbots in a leaderboard. Chatbot arena? Yeah. And give them an empty bench score. So you can see the best performing AI models. And the first, yeah, the best open source one seems to be Llama 2. So I guess that is pretty exciting. Um, if you wanted to build an offline model or a, a train model on your private data, you could use Llama 2. Yo, Hunter on Twitch, what the fuck? I thought you stream TikTok only. No, I'm actually, I'm actually on a lot of platforms. Hunter says, I think some Elon guy got the hand of Twitter at that time. <laughs> Elon guy. <laughs> yes. You reckon Elon's fucked up the algorithm so I don't get any cool AI shit anymore. And he's just pointing everyone to XAI. XAI is pretty interesting too. Do they have a nice website? I'd love to work for them. Understand the universe. You know, that's something that like I found to be interesting about these AI models. Like my initial, um, my initial thing was like these, my initial impression was like these AI models are so smart in like so many different areas of expertise 
as if they can't like you know combine all these different perspectives on like any human has been able to do to do and like arrive at some new discoveries right but no they haven't been able to discover anything new so it's like i don't know i thought that was a bit surprising for me but i guess the more you think about it it's like these are just statistic models kind of like regurgitating what's already been you know put out in in the in the like on the internet right so maybe maybe like you know you can't expect them to come up with anything new but this is kind of what they're trying to do with xai right like understand the universe come to new discoveries answer questions in ways that humans haven't been able to do before so i think that's like really exciting but will they actually be able to pull it off probably they have like so many smart people working on this so i know I'm very excited about what they will do with this. Yeah. Um, so let's look at MT Bench. Like, how do they rate these models? So you can see Claude 2 is very close to GPT-4, but GPT-4 is still the best. And Llama 2 is exciting because it's, I think it's, commercially licensable so you can actually like make your own models off llama 2 and like make a commercial product off them which is very cool Andre says i saw you use refract in a video it's a great tool recraft yes recraft i've used that to make image generation oh but actually i've heard leonardo ai is doing great things in image generation so should we try that Oh, you need to be whitelisted? That sucks, dude. Let me pretend I'm whitelisted. Man, I just suggested this to someone, but I didn't realize that you need to be whitelisted. I might be whitelisted. Yo, I'm whitelisted. Let's go. Um... Gotta pick uh interest other. Developer to developer. Yeah, so Leonardo AI is like almost as good as mid journey, I think. But they what one reason they are better than mid journey is their web app and their tools. Google sign-ins are the best way to log in. Yeah, so easy. Yo, Leo, what are we working on? Uh, I'm just checking out Leonardo AI right now. Um, I've kind of gone through all the all the tools that I wanted to test, so it's just I'm just doing whatever now. Um, John Powell says I think they discovered a faster sorting algorithm using AI and C plus plus. Oh shit! Is that true? Let's Google that. AI discovers. Foster sorting algorithm. Alpha de oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, Alpha Dev discovers a foster sorting algorithm. In C plus plus. Yeah, that's true. Okay, but that's like one thing that it's done. No, still impressive. Still impressive for sure, but like for when I first started using llms i was like how have they not like discovered heaps of shit like new like physics formulas and shit you know what i mean because they have this model of the universe that so they should be able to like reason and stuff is what i thought but no that's cool what were you testing um i tested sweep ai that worked really well so sweep ai for like um making code off of like like making changes to your code base like just the user experience is amazing i'll make a video on it for sure in like the coming days um it's probably too much to go into now but you could watch the vod on this later um when it goes on youtube if you wanted to see that but yeah it was really good what else did we test 3d5 I wasn't too impressed with this they made um 3d images well 3d models based off a prompt 
Sweep AI. Leo, so sweep. Sweep.dev is their site. But yeah, it was so cool. Actually, we could, I could probably show you real quickly. So um, it's so cool. So they've built it in a GitHub app, right? And how it works is you make an issue. So I've made these two issues here. I've said change. So you, you make an issue, you go sweep colon and then whatever your prompt is. So I said change the starting color of the user play snake to blue. And then it like full makes a pull request. It plans everything. It finds it's it searches through your code, sees where to change it, makes a pull request. This is a pull request it made. Makes a full description, the changes that it made. It says it tested it, but I don't think it did. And yeah, you'll see like it perfect. It did the perfect code change. I mean, I, it was a very simple task, but it did it perfectly well. And then I gave it a bit more complex task. And then it's awesome. It does it all within GitHub. You don't have to install anything. Um, it works all just on your repository and you just merge a pull request and it's done. It's so easy. Leo says, does sweep AI hallucinate function parameters that don't exist? It probably does. It didn't for me, but yeah, it probably does. If you give it too big of like a task to do, it probably um, will hallucinate. But I, it hasn't for me. For me, with these just these two um, prompts that I've given it, it's worked flawlessly. It's it's done it perfectly. Hunter says, "What are you most afraid of about AI development? Do you think you would easily get a hold of poison recipes or diseases?" Um, I'm not really too afraid about those stuff. I feel like if you were smart enough, you could probably find those things online um, already. But obviously you need a bit of smarts to be able to find them online and trick an AI. The current AIs, they have a lot of good safety precautions to avoid that stuff. So uh, I'm not too afraid at the moment. Okay, let's look at these tools by Leonardo AI. They have AI image generation, AI canvas, and texture generation. Let's look at their image generation. Make these a bit bigger. So I think this is pretty much just prompt to output, but they also, yeah, they have a bit of parameters and settings. Um, they might even be able to do image to image. Yeah, image to image awesome stuff I've unlocked some stuff oh they have a bunch of different models dream shaper stable diffusion Absolute Reality, Leonardo Diffusion, Custom Model. Um, should we look at their examples? Because I think you can see what the prompt is. Yeah, you can. It's very cool. Like, look at that. Wow, this is like Harley Quinn. Like, look at that. That is amazing. Like, trying to make something like this 10 years ago would have taken so long. But wow, they just do it like probably took like not even 10 minutes. So I want to make something like this. Lowish Jeremy man, full body shot, character sheet, light wave, 3D CGI, glowing neon, umbrella emoji. <laughs> what? Some of this stuff doesn't make sense to me. Um, I want to make a cool profile picture. Can you upload like a picture of myself and then get it to, because it does image to image, right? How do you upload an image? Oh, here, upload an image. Image to image. Let me find an image of myself. I want it to like be similar to my face, but like, you know, cool tech, digital rain type 
stuff. So I'm just going to find the image of myself, which is nice. Maybe this one. What about this? What do you guys think of this? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> she. <laughs> uh, let me look at some more options. Remini AI does that, yeah, but I think that one is paid, right? Remini. So with Leonardo, I have 150 tokens for free. But is there a free? Oh, you can try Remini. Oh, you can just do it. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Let me upload something. Which one? Okay, this one's nice. Uh, okay, I've, I've used this image. Let's see if this what Remini does with this. I bet you as soon as I upload this, it's like, please log in. Let's see. Oh, no. It's uploading it. It's enhanced. Oh, is this just enhanced? No, I don't want to just enhance. already like oh I made my skin a bit smoother that's cool but I want to do um no where's all the cool AI shit what the hell just enhance and beautify nah dude do some cool shit like what where's all the cool shit <laughs> where's all the cool shit bro where is that? It's uh, Italy, Sorrento. I think it made the background worse. It just made it blurry. But where? I thought Remini had like. Well, maybe I just clicked on the wrong thing. It had yeah AI photos. Oh, it's mobile only. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. All right, I might as well just use this with Leonardo. Oh, it won't let me use this? Why can't I use image to image with Leonardo? Maybe I gotta use a different model. Oh. Uh, hmm. V2? Ah, uh, V2, okay. V2, upload my image uh or high res number of images to okay so i've uploaded an image And I'm going to write a prompt similar to like some cyberpunk shit we saw on the front page. Let's see. What's some cool cyberpunk shit. I think that Naruto one was my favorite. This one. Wait, actually, this. Okay, let's see. She drew me my full body shell anyway, uh, glowing neon. So I, I don't want, I don't want these. But I do want like, um, digital rain, cyber technology, futuristic hoodie. Oh yeah, we'll have streetwear. Okay. This will use eight tokens, that's fine. What's dynamic, creative, environment? Oh man, which one was that? What does that say? Image to image. Copy. Oh. 
negative prompt. Ooh. Okay, let's add the negative prompt. That's pretty cool. So stuff you don't want. Um, I don't know what to put in this dynamic one. Yeah, the I've de I've seen the LinkedIn trend to John Power with the Remini app. It's been like it's been going viral. Oh, preset anime. Oh no, pipeline alchemy. Okay. Pipeline Alchemy doesn't have there's no alchemy here. Maybe I need to do so as a base model one alchemy is enabled. It's not currently possible to select while alchemy is enabled. Oh alchemy is enabled. Oh anime. Oh okay, yes, anime. Okay, here we go. Generate. Ooh, I'm excited. I've excited. I haven't done like image generation in so long. Hunter says the fingers on those PFPs are still off. Oh, are they? I haven't looked at them closely. Are you talking about the LinkedIn ones? It's funny because look at look at the negative prompt here. Too many fingers. Yo, that's cool, but it's not me. Why didn't the my face work? Damn. Let's just do a single image and do, wait, why is it still two? Wait, these, it's almost as if it's not applying the, um, the, uh, the advanced things. Is that right? Is it, maybe it isn't applying my image. I don't think it did. Don't think it did apply my image. All right, whatever, we'll just make it dark hair, dark hair, Persian boy, Persian man. <laughs> <laughs> Generate 19 tokens. No shit. Why did it double? Oh, I should have done a single one. There's no digital rain either. I should have put digital rain matrix. Sixteen. Only three more tokens for two images. Yo. Shit. That's actually kind of more accurate damn that persian man prompt actually worked dark hair persian man dark hair persian man round nose beard short beard this is cool Damn, I'm going to use all these tokens, though. I mean, it doesn't really look like me, but it has the same features. The hands are, like, really good, so it doesn't really struggle with hands. That's closer. It's closer for sure. Okay, the let's. Which one do you think has the? I'm gonna do cyberspace. Metaverse. Full body shot, character sheet, lightning wave. I'm gonna remove. Lowish. I don't know what that is, but maybe that's what's and Jeremy man. Maybe that's what's. Oh, the Neon City. That's definitely what's causing the Neon City. All right, this is my last, last um, generation. Let 
Let's see where we will be now that we're not in a neon city. It's very fast as well. It's like 30 seconds, not even 20 seconds. Still a neon city. Very cool images though. I really like it. All right, we'll leave that at that. Um, I don't really have much else to do here. I could work on my own stuff. I'll just quickly check my notifications. Oh, nothing pressing. Um, yeah, I don't know if no one else has any ideas. Would end the stream there. I think I will. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. I really appreciate it. All the comments. I appreciate you guys. If you guys could follow me on Kick, that would be even more appreciative because that means maybe I'm on my way to getting actually paid for streaming. So that would be great. Or we got streaming. two more followers this stream. So that is awesome thank you guys so much um i'll be making clips from this stream and posting them on tiktok so yeah i appreciate everyone who was here and i hope to see you again bye